want to talk a little bit about design today, about just a text. There was a way you can think about the kind of like texture and pacing uh, to break up your game and make it uh, better. And it doesn't have to be just one thing. Like games aren't just one thing. They're often multiple things stacked. So when I worked on Half-Life 2 episodes, um, we thought of the game in pieces of combat, clearly, right? You're, you're, you're shooting. Uh, there's story. There's vista, meaning you get to see something. And then puzzle, you got to figure out how to do something. Uh, and those are kind of the four elements that broke up the game, and we just alternated them. And they each kind of spoke to a different part of what people liked. And it wasn't just like, hey, some people like this, some people like that, and some people like that, so we're going to put all of that in our game. Instead, it's like, well, no, introducing these bits and you know pieces lets people have a break. Because if it's just combat, you're going to get fatigued. If it's just one thing, you're going to be fatigued. You know, and I see now in a lot of modern games, you'll see this with uh, exploration, uh, crafting, looting. Um, like all of those are things that are kind of ways out of the experience to give you you breaks as well. But back in the old days, I don't know when this was even published, uh, but there was a, there's a, a paper called MDA, A Formal Approach to Game Design and Game Research. It's by Robin Heineke, Mark LeBlanc, and Robert Zubek. Uh, it's a good paper. Uh, you should read it. I will attach it here. Um, and I think, uh, yeah, I don't know when it was written. But um, one of the things in this paper, it's, well, it covers a lot of stuff and you should break it out, is they break out um, aesthetics, what makes a game fun. And they break it out into eight different segments. Now, they, they, they agree that there's others as well, um, but these are like eight ways to think about it. And so uh, I was just going to bring those up because as you're making your game, you should be thinking about these. You know, I, t I, mean, I talked about that with making the Anacrusis of a struggle for some of the other people on the team to understand that there was more to the game than just difficulty because they lived in multiplayer difficulty games and that's what they concentrated on. But games are more than that. Sometimes games aren't about the challenge at all. Um, and it's just about the experience. And I wanted to bring more of that into the co-op experience, right? I think like Sea of Thieves is a good example of this, where it's, that game is not about the difficulty or the challenges per se, while those are existing in the game. Um, it's about the experience you have with other players. So I tell you what, it's pretty fun to play solo, just sail around and, you know, it's, it's here, here, I'll get to why that game works in a lot of different ways. So here are their eight. Uh, again, there's more, but these are good framing for it, and I'll link to the paper. Uh, one, sensation. Games is sense pleasure, right? This could be something like those Vistas, but for me, it's also sometimes of like, I'll play on my mobile device threes, and I'm not really about the puzzle solving sometimes as much as just like the sliding around feels good. There's like a, just a part of that that just feels good, you know, and that could be from how you move through the world to what you see in the world. But it's this this kind of experience with it. And then there's fantasy, right? And that's playing make-believe. But that's a really broad spectrum, right? Because there's the classic of like, you're the elf fighting the dragon all the way up to something like uh, um, Lethal Company, which I described, you know, kind of as like the Ouija board game where you're make-believe you're playing with your friends and you all know you're in on the joke. You all know you're purposely going to kind of do bad things because it's funny, but you try to do it seriously about it, right? And there's a whole thing about that that I think really works. Uh, number three is narrative. Uh, pretty clear on this, right? You know, one of the ways you think about narrative used differently is in Portal. We use narrative as a reward. So you've got a puzzle and then you got narrative. Puzzle, narrative, puzzle, narrative, right? And that was the kind of the back and forth. And then the narrative also gives context for the greater game so that you're just not having that without meaning. There's an arc to the story. There's an entire, you know, um, start, middle, and end. And, you know, clearly some games lean into this way more than others, but almost all games have some version of this, um, you know, outside of just mechanic games. Because some games, you know, again, some games live in one space, but I think it's always better if games can pull on multiple of these because then they have a more complex kind of texture to them. And then four is challenge, right? And this is the classic. Games is an obstacle course is how they describe it. But really, we know this from, you know, just multiplayer games. So my pause there was how to talk about is often I've worked with people who are really good at AI that look at the challenge of the player versus them versus the experience that they give the players. 
Um, and when you know, when you think of AI in that way and the obstacle course you're creating, I think it'll make a much richer game than just making them overcome the challenge itself. Uh, and then number five is fellowship. Uh, that's something I lean into a lot, right? My co-op games are about playing together. Uh, again, Sea of Thieves does this really well where, sure, you, you are doing missions and you are playing things, but it's the fun, it's the goofiness of doing that. And I, I know some people who actually lean into the make-believe and the fantasy and role-play this. I, the role play always just feels forced and empty to me. It's kind of like when you see all those TikTok videos and you're like, oh my God, I live such a great life. And they're always doing this. And I'm like, oh my God, I don't want to raise my hands above my head that much. I don't. Like, that's just not fun to me. That always just feels weird and forced. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, Discovery. Games is uncharted territory. You know, so when I talk about this in the context of like the, the Half-Life series, well, there is Discovery in a way, if you think about it, Often there's not because there's just not a lot to discover in those games in the sense of like you discover the world in, but it's limited of like you're going down that path. Everyone's going to discover the same set of things. That's cool. And that is part of the experience. But now I think we see a lot of games where there's way more branches, way more reason to explore because there's many more things in the world, many more things you're going to craft, right? Sometimes discovery isn't just, isn't just the exploration part, but discovery is what can I craft after this? I mean, I think Minecraft lost a little bit giving me everything you can craft because it's kind of like meh i mean sure but it just doesn't feel as 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 kind of i don't know f rewarding to find the, or explore and understand the new things to make uh number seven is expression the game of self-discovery uh now there's no surprise that uh the people who made this also uh, some of these people worked on the game journey uh you know that is definitely about kind of this growth really you know in you as a person thinking about the travels you're going through and stuff and you know the cool thing about that game i don't think it's talked about enough is normally when games have been out for a while you don't want new players to play them because the hardcore players that are still there will chase them off but here the hardcore players look at it as an opportunity to have that experience and give the experience of a journey to new people and i think it's kind of a magical thing but, you know, game, other games do this as well. And, you know, I think some games really try to explore and, and kind of tackle this. And this is a weird thing of, I once joked, um, no game story has been better than the worst pop 40 song. Meaning there's like this, this thing that you'll feel when you listen to a song that is just so magical and great. And it puts you in a mood and thinking and games do do that, right? I was being by sarcastic, but man, music does that so well. Songs do that so well. And games, you know, can can we be as good as the best uh, song to do that to you? And I think some games really do bring me into a mood and a feeling um, that's interesting. But yeah, I, that's all of this, right? Um, and then, you know, submissions in game that is a pastime is the last one. Number eight. And I always think of, there was some executive, I forget the game company, who was just like, Hey, who are we kidding? All we're making is things to kill time when we're in line at the bank. And I felt so bad for that guy, not for the heap of scorn he got, but just if that's what he thinks he's making. Because I've seen people get married who met from games I've made, right? Like, that's magical. That is super cool. Um, like, the games bring so much more. And I think especially the business side, the older folk, uh miss that of all these other things they can bring and often then it sprouts out to bigger conversations um that we have about games and we talk about you know there's a lot of this like oh my god there's no third place anymore and it used to be movie theaters were where different classes of people mixed or whatever and you know blah blah blah, blah. and i'll tell you what no people play games because <laughs> Uh, as my other video just just pointed out of the the the, the gift i got from somebody in my community um the people I play games with are my friends, right? I want to play with them. I want to catch up with them. I want to hang out with them. Um, and do I know them as intimately as some people in the real world? No, but also some people in the real world, right? I mean, it's the, hey, uh, why they break up? I don't know. I didn't, we can talk about that. You know, and some, sometimes it's the same here. Um, where it's not superficial, but it's a different kind of friendship. And I really value that. And so I think as you make your game and you think about these different ways of approaching it, the different aesthetics of it, a really good paper just to refer back to and think about what more textures can you bring to your game? Because games are so much more than killing time, right? And they can actually get someone to get a tattoo or even get married. 